learn how to become the best basketball player in the world. And if I'm going to learn that, I got to learn from the best. And kids go to school to be doctors or lawyers and so forth and so on. And that's where they study. That's the place for them to study. My place to study is from the best. I just looked at it as I want to be one of the best basketball players who have ever played. That's the end goal. Okay, how do I get there? How do I get there? And every decision I made in my life was centered around the process of helping me eventually get there. You know what I'm saying? So I had that purpose. And once I had that purpose, every decision that I made was centered around that purpose. Exactly. I was just determined. You know, just locked in. Just tuned in to what was going on out there and just blocked everything out. And uh, just zeroed in on being more aggressive and uh, just setting the tempo. Um, so this was very similar to the Dallas game as far as you know, my mentality. I do view myself as being one of the best who've ever laced them up. Um, but in terms of ranking them, I can't possibly imagine because I, everything that I do, I've learned from the guys who've come before me. It's competitiveness, yes, but it's a simple um, theory or, or idea to live life by. If you're going to do something, do it to the best of your ability. No matter what it is, if you're going to do it, do it to the best of your ability. And so like the consistency of work, Monday, get better. Tuesday, get better. Wednesday, get better. Right. And you do that over a period of time, you know, not like one month or two months. I mean, it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. And then, you, you know, you can get to where you want to go. You know, basketball for me was the most important thing. So everything I saw, whether it was TV shows, whether it was books I read, people I talked to, everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. Everything. Everything. And so when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft. Uh, we're not on this stage just because of talent or ability. We're up here because of 4 a.m. We're up here because of two-a-days or five-a-days. We're up here because we had a dream and let nothing stand in our way. If anything tried to bring us down, we used it to make us stronger. We were never satisfied, never finished, will never be retired. My high school English teacher, Mr. Fisk, I actually paid attention one time in class, and, and he said, he had this beautiful quote, and, he, and it read, rest at the end, not in the middle. And I took that to heart. I believe there's time for resting at the end, but for me, that time is not now. Thank you for this tremendous honor and acknowledging my basketball career, but I'm far from done. My next dream is to be honored one day for inspiring the next generation of athletes to have a dream, sacrifice for it, and never ever rest in the middle. Trying to be the best version of yourself. That's what the mentality means. It means every day you know, you're trying to become better. And it's a constant quest. It's an infinite quest. So starting at the age of two when I first started playing the game and on and on and on, I always ask questions. I always try to get better every single day, learn more, learn You were more, asking questions at two? Oh, dude, I was asking <laughs> questions all the time. I mean, you'd be surprised, like some people, like my kids at two could do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. right? At two, I could dribble a basketball, I could shoot a basketball on the Nerf hoop at the house, and I would go to practice with my father, I would observe my father, um, I'd sit and watch games with him. I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work is to learn, is to absorb, um, to be a sponge, right? But you always want to outwork your potential. You know, as hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. And that's what I tried to do when I first came in the league. But, you know, basketball is such a direct competition sport that me coming in at 17, I hated when, like, my teammates would say, you know, I get hit with an elbow, right? Shaq would hit me with an elbow in practice and, like, you know. <laughs> You know, Nick Van Exel will come up and say, are you okay? I'm like, motherfucker, what? <laughs> like, Mao, are you okay? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? You know, so like, I always had that extra chip on my shoulder. So like, every day in practice for me was really trying to annihilate everybody that, was, that I was playing against. Because I wanted to prove you don't need to babysit me. Like, I, I'm fine, <laughs> you know? You know, people don't really understand how obsessed I am with winning. It's not, I don't care about anything else on a basketball court, but winning. You know, uh, I just try to use everything I can for motivation, and that's a tool, you know, for, for me to be able to elevate my team to play the best basketball, so uh, I try to use a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Sense of purpose. No, a sense of purpose was there ever since I was a kid. I knew exactly, I, I felt like I knew what God put me on this earth to do. 
was playing the game of basketball. I just loved it so much. Is it true that when you're in high school, you would show up for practice at 5 a.m. and not leave until 7 p.m.? Yeah. Do you think that's because you love basketball or because you're crazy? Both. It's a competition. My, my mission is to destroy you. It's, it's not, you know, I mean, like, I don't say, you know, like, we're playing, I'm, I'm not stopping at 30. Like, I'm, I'm going to keep going until you figure out something else to do. Like, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep going, you know, and like, actually, after I got drafted, um, you, know, you have to go in, you have to do your calls. Mm -hmm. You know, so I go in, I do a call, and I speak to a representative uh, from the organization at the time. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, they told me that, you know, they were looking to move me because they really didn't have any use or need for me. Mm -hmm. I said, they didn't have any use for you, even though they traded you for Vlade Diva. Well, you know, I was, at the time, I mean, I was, you know, 17 years old, and, and I heard that, and I was like, okay. Mm. I know what I'm going to be doing every day this summer. Mm -hmm. All day that? this summer. Train my butt up. Mm. You know, because when I hear stuff like that, I mean, that's just automatically just telling me you can't do something. You can't, you know, we don't need you. Mm -hmm. So, okay. You know you, get, you know, you get drafted, you get on the phone with the GM of the team that drafted you and all that sort of stuff. So I get on the phone with the Charlotte GM, and he just tells me, hey, you know, you know what's going on. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you got media in front of you and all that. And he goes, well, it's a good thing we're trading you because we couldn't have used you anyway. What? You mother f <laughs> Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's what happened on draft night. So I was already, I was already triggered. In mode. I was triggered. I was ready to go to the gym. Like, fuck the media. Like, I don't want to do any more interviews. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, what you telling me that for? I'm well, 17, what you telling, okay, all right. Well, I learned that you have to work hard and you have to approach the game with a serious mindset. Uh, there's a step up from high school and I understand that, so therefore, every time I step on a basketball court, I'm gonna put a strong effort out there on the floor. I'm, I'm not gonna leave anything on the floor. Two rings later, they all star. I'm, I'm still hungry, I'm still thirsty to improve and to learn. Um, and that, that's never gonna stop, it's endless. And, um, I'm just going to keep on moving, keep on marching, and keep on learning. Well, I enjoyed playing basketball. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, I, you know, and when I say that, uh, people tend to have a tendency to take that lightly. Yeah. But no, I love the game. I love it, right? I didn't want to be away from it. I wanted to play all the time. Like, a lot of guys have fun hanging out in the pool in Vegas, and that's, that's it's fine. There's a time and place for that, right? But, like... When I was 18, 20, 21 years old, I wanted to play basketball. I was consumed with this quest of trying to be the best, you know, and we weren't there yet. I had to, there's so many things I had to figure out. Like, am I training properly? Am I working on the right things on the court? There's so many things to do. I didn't have time to go and, you know, hang out over here. So, right. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's an obsessiveness that comes along with it. You want things to be as perfect as they can be. Understanding that nothing is ever perfect, but the challenge is try to get them as perfect as they can be. Mm -hmm. And what can you do? It's in your control. So control what you can. Yeah. I can watch film all day long. It's gonna help me get better. Yes. Yeah. It's just a matter of what's important to you. Mm -hmm. And what's important to you, for, for whatever reason, you know, I, I felt like um, I didn't feel good about myself if I wasn't doing everything I could to be the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. If I felt like I left anything on the table, um, it would eat away at me. I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror. Right? So the reason why I can retire now and be completely comfortable about it because I know that I've done everything I could to be the best basketball player I could be. You know, listen, these practices, practices are meant to be competitive. They're meant to be competitive. If your practices are more competitive than the games themselves, you're doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And most of these teams and coaches have gotten into a mindset of resting players. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a, too much. You know, we're not going to practice light day, light day, light day. Phil never gave us a light day. Mm -hmm. There's no days off. You show up and you work. Yeah. You practice. Yeah. And practices are going to be worse. They're yeah. going to be more physical. There's going to be more trash talking. And I'm going to let you know. Right? Yeah. If you didn't, you didn't show up today, I'm going to let you know. Yeah. And it's going to be embarrassing. And you're going to hate it. Um, but when game seven rolls around the NBA finals, you will be prepared. You know, we had a really competitive household with my cousins and, you know, my father and my uncle and stuff like we was very competitive. And, you know, you had to really, really work to just survive. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, that's with swimming, that's playing basketball, that's playing video games, whatever. I mean, it was a shit talking family. Like, 
then when you lose, you not only lose, but you get embarrassed while you lose. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I grew up in that kind of environment. So you, know, you had to work hard just to just to kind of keep your head above water sort of thing. And I came into the NBA. I was like, man, these dudes really don't work that hard. <laughs> it was pretty. It was kind of an eye opener. I was like, like as a kid, I said, I want to be the best ever. Right? And now you go through your life and everything you do is try to be the best ever, be the best ever, be the best ever. And as you get older, you start understanding that those things are very superficial things. Right? And everybody has a different opinion about it. No matter what you do, I can win 20 championships. There's always an opinion on who's the best. Everybody has different opinions. And so I started really kind of understanding, maybe that's not the important thing. Maybe the important thing is to, you know, how do we as a team grow? How do I help my teammates be better? So that was the first change for me. And then as I got older still, it became more about um, how are you inspiring others right, to find themselves. That is the ultimate championship. So uh, won five championships, that's great. Another team won a championship this year. Team's gonna win a championship next year. Those things come and they go. But what stays is how do you use your passion and use that to inspire somebody else to create their passion and then how can they pass that on to the next person? That is true success. Game, and you know, I trained my butt off this summer. I mean, I really, I really went pedal to the metal. So uh, conditioning-wise, I'm I'm ready. Uh, I prepare myself every game, so I'm ready for that. And uh, you know, I, I call uh, Kwame Brown and Chris Freeman, those guys. I call them my offensive line. You know, because they set incredible screens for me to free me up. You know, so it's it's a you know it's a collection of things. It's not just me going out there and scoring. You know, I need help from my teammates, and uh, them them recognizing when they give me the ball in certain situations, and uh, they set excellent screens for me. They look for me, made great passes. Um, so you know, without them, I couldn't have scored 81 points. I mean, they did a great job freeing me up. I mean, every day. I mean, since you know, for 20 years. I mean, it was an everyday process and trying to figure out strengths and weaknesses. For example. Jumping ability. Man, my vertical was a 40. It wasn't a 46 or a 40, mm-hmm. 45. Um, my hands are big, but they're not massive, right? So you got to figure out ways to strengthen them so your hands are strong enough to be able to palm a ball and do the things that you need to do. Uh, quickness. I was quick, but not insanely quick. I was fast, but not ridiculously fast, right? So I had to rely on skill a lot more. I had to rely on angles a lot more. I had to study the game a lot more. And, uh, but I enjoyed it though. So like from the time I was, I can remember when I started watching the game, I studied the game mm. and it just never changed. Like uh, we used to have an All-American camp that I used to go to. And you know, at the time when I first showed up, I was a sophomore. And um, one of the things I would do is while everybody would be at the cafeteria work, you know, eating and doing all sort of stuff. I just go back to the gym. I just go back to the gym. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, they'd know, be resting, they'd eating. Be re- and they'd see me leave. Right, but now you're in a tough position because you're like, okay, I want to be like I'm following the kid to go work right. out, but I know he's working, he's up early, and he's doing all this wow. other stuff, and so that was my way of sh- of showing them, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, maybe from the suburbs, but you're not going to outwork me. Well, I, I tried to find a balance, right? I tried to do both. You know, I, I had a great deal of energy, so um, if there was a school party going on or something like that, I mean, I'd, I'd play basketball for a few hours, you know. I'd, do what I have to do and have fun doing it. And then you know, I'd go to the party and I'd show up and I'd have a good time, have fun. And I'd be up at five o'clock in the morning, you know, working out, working out and, you know, training the next day. So I, I tried to try to do both. So it's my responsibility to make sure everybody's holding themselves accountable. I'm holding you accountable. If we just play the back to back and we have practice the next day, your ass better be there tape ready to go. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause I'm there and I'm ready. And I just got finished lifting weights for two hours. Right, so I hold guys to a higher standard. Before you start a game, how can you lock in and get into that mental space where nothing else matters? You're completely locked in and focused on what you're trying to accomplish as an athlete out here. The noise of the crowd doesn't matter, whether the cheering or booing doesn't matter. You're just completely locked in. How do you do that? That was one of those zone moments, man, where like things happen and it just led to that big moment. But like Andrew Bynum, we just lost the game before. Mm-hmm. He got an injury against Memphis, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, we just lost to the Celtics in 08. We're thinking we got Andrew who's going to make a big difference for us. Now he goes down. We don't know how long he's going to be out for. The team was a little deflated. I was pissed off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like, no, we're winning the championship this year. Come hella high water. And my guys were down. Yeah. And going into New York, big game, I said, all right, I got to send the message to my guys and say, no, listen, 
we're doing this. Yeah. I understand it's hard. You went down, but damn it, we're getting it done. And at 13 years old, you know, I played the longer game because my game wasn't about being better than you at 13. It was to be better than you when you know the chips are really on on the line. So when we played at 13, I would size you up and see what your strengths and weaknesses are. How do you approach the game? Are you silly about it? Are you goofy about it? Are you good at it just because you're bigger and stronger than everybody else? Right? Or is there actually thought and skill that you put into it? Right? And when I'd play, I'd play to my weaknesses. I wouldn't play to my strengths. I'd play to my weaknesses. Because when you're playing summer basketball, there's so many games. So there's not a lot of skill work being done. So when are you going to get better? Right? When you're playing in competition situations, you're only playing to your strengths. Why? Because you want to win. Right? So what I would do, I was work on the things during those games that I was weak at. Left hand, pull up jump shot, uh, post game. Right? So I have a strategy. And so then fast forward to when I'm 17 and my game is completely well rounded and that player at 13 that I saw at 13 is still doing the same shit at 17. Mm. Now you got a problem. Right? My basketball team, for example, I have the girls run lines. And uh, you know, we could just as easily say, like I had a parent he was encouraging his daughter. He ran at 17, and he was encouraging her. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Dig deep, dig deep. And then after practice, I go to him and say, you know, when she's doing those line drills, don't say anything. Because there's a, con there's a conversation that's happening inside of her head. She's like talking to herself, trying to pump herself up to do it. She's already having those conversations. So for an outside voice to come in, to give her guidance, and to give her uh, the, 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 the kind of the... the the push to keep going actually interrupts her process. Just let her be, let her figure it out herself. Uh, because as they go through life, as parents, we're not gonna be there all the time, you know what I mean? So kids have to be able to navigate those things themselves. If you wanna be a great player, if you play every single day, two, three hours, every single day, over the course of a year, how much better are you getting? Most kids will play maybe, you know, an hour and a half, two days a week. Right. Put the math on that. It's not, it's, not going, that. it's not going to get it done. <laughs> not going to get it done, right? So if you're obsessive, obsessive, obsessively training two, three hours every single day over a year, over two years, you make quantum leaps, man. Just